And as usual, please don't take any screenshots, recordings, or photos of this call without the express permission of the AGJC. And with that out of the way, Huda, over to you to kick us off this week. Thank you. Thanks, Jake. And it gives me great pleasure to, um, to welcome you all to today's AGJC's weekly pre Shabbat Zoom. Each week, we gather together the Jewish community of all the GCC countries and, the and our families and friends from around the world to hear an special message before Shabbat, light candles, hear a Dvar Torah from Rabbi Abadi, pray and read a section from the weekly Torah portion. The Association of Gulf Jewish Communities is the umbrella organization for the Jewish communities of the GCC countries that are building and enhancing Jewish life in the region. While each community is independent, we share a common goal and vision for Jewish life to flourish in the Gulf to the benefit of both residents and visitors. Thank you all for joining us today, and we hope you will join us next week as well. To stay updated on AGJC events, please follow us on Twitter at, at Gulf Jewish and visit our website www.gulfjewish.org. Jake? Thanks, Huda. With candle lighting this week, over to tomorrow. Hi, everyone. Happy to be here. All right. <clears throat> Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech olam, asher kedishanu b'mitzvotav b'tzifanu lehadlik ner shel Shabbat. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Shabbat shalom. Amen. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat Thank shalom. you more. We're blessed this week to be joined by Chazan Yitzhi Spinner, who's going to lead Yidid Nefesh and Lechadot Bifraz. Good morning, everyone from New York. Good morning. Um, just before I begin, um, can anyone remind me which verses of Lecha Dodi we say? I don't, I don't recall from the last time I was here. So you after the whole thing, after Mikdash Melech, you go to Yamin Usmol. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> but before Mikdash Melech, we'll go to Yedid Nefesh. <laughs> Yedid Nefesh, Avarach Hamal, Mishoch Avlecha. Shalom 
Tair Eretz Mikvodecha Nagila Vinismecha Maherehob Kivamoed Vechaneinu We'll go straight into the Chadodi. Lechadodi li hikrat kala pene ishabat ne hikabila lechadodi li hikrat kala pene ishabat ne hikabila shamor vizachor bedi burechad hishmianu el hamiyuchad adonai echad ushmo echad. Shame who let you ferret, Velitina, Lehadodi, Lehi Kratkala, Pene Shabbat, Nehi Kabila, Li Krat Shabbat, Lehovine Lecha, Kihi Mikor, Ahabiracha, Mirosh Mikedem, Nesucha, Sof Maase, Machashavat Hina, Lehadodi, Lehi Kratkala, Pene Shabbat, Nehi Kabila, Miktash Melech, Yehir Minucha, Kumiti, Mitocha Fechara, Vlach Shevet, Behim Kabacha, Huya Hamo, Ola Yichemela, Lechadodi, Lehi Kratkala, Pene Shabbat ne Kabila Yaminu smoti froti Vietadonai Tariti al Yadish Ben Parti Venis Mecha Venagina Lechadodi Likrat Kala Pene Shabbat ne Kabila Bohi Vishalo Materet Bala Gam Bissimcha Uhu Vitsahula Tochemune Am Sigula Bohi Chala Bohi Chala Lechadodi Likrat Kala Pene Shabbat Ne Kabila Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Thank you, Chazan Yitzin. And now we'll turn back to Huda, who's going to introduce our guest speaker for the week. Okay, so I'm standing in for Ambassador Eitan. He must be busy somewhere. Um, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Ambassador Khaled Yusuf al Jalahma. Oh, I'm sorry, okay. So, Ambassador Khalid has more than 20 years of experience. He began serving his country with distinction both at home in Bahrain and abroad since the early 2000s. Ambassador Jalahma joined the Bahrain Defense Force in 1996 and graduated from the Military College of South Carolina, the Citadel, a public military college in Charleston, South Carolina, ranked as the number one college in the South by US News and World Report. 
He then went on to receive a master's degree from American University in Washington, D.C. in 2000. Professionally, Ambassador Jalahma worked through the military ranks in the Bahrain's Defense Force, first as a senior project manager and then as director of intergovernmental relations at Bahrain's Supreme Defense Council. Ambassador Al Jalahma's final position at the Defense Force was at the Supreme Defense Council Secretariat General, where he contributed to the establishment of the Defense Force's Secretary General, setting up the Budgeting Department and the Department of Intergovernmental Relations. Ambassador Al Jalahma's diplomatic career started when he was appointed to Washington, D.C., where he served as, as deep chef, uh, sorry, as deep. <laughs> as Deputy Chief of Mission at the Kingdom of, of Bahrain's Embassy in the United States for four years, from 2009 to 2013. During, the, during this time, he supervised the embassy staff and the daily operations of the embassy, in addition to the embassy's consular and administrative sections. Moreover, he oversaw the unique, crucial relationship with the U.S. Congress, where he successfully spearheaded the embassy's legislative efforts in the U.S. Congress during an important period in U.S.-Bahraini relations. Upon completing his post in Washington, D.C., al Jalahma Ahmed was appointed in several posts in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to lead the Projects and Pro Properties Division, and then to serve as Director of Operations. Throughout the years in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, he led several projects and initiatives, namely but not restricted to the successful completion and inauguration of Bahrain's embassy in both Abu Dhabi and Kuwait. Additionally, Ambassador al Jalahma Ahmed actively participated in several committees, most notably the committee responsible for recruiting Bahraini diplomats, the Projects and Building Committee, and the committee related to administrative control. As Director of Operations, he supervised more than 60 employees in various fields and sectors. In 2020, Ambassador Jalahma led the efforts to repatriate Bahrainis from the, around the world, as well as initiatives to work across governmental sectors to address all consular concerns related to the COVID-19 pandemic. Ambassador Jalahma was appointed as the first Bahraini ambassador to the State of Israel in March of 2021. He is an accomplished sportsman and in his spare time enjoys coaching football. He is married with three children. Uh, ambassador Khaled, over to you. Um, <clears throat> thank you very much, Ada. Um, Mubarakah and Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Uh, I'm really happy uh, to be here today. The last event I was at with the AGJC was uh, a Shabbat dinner before I left uh, Bahrain to Israel. It was actually my first uh, uh, Shabbat dinner. Uh, and it's great to see that the community uh, is getting uh, bigger by the day. Um, well, I was going to congratulate uh, Etan, but since he's not here, I'll congratulate uh, Israel on uh, the success of the first National Day event uh, of the Embassy of Israel in Bahrain. Uh, I, woke up, I woke up to uh, a lot of messages this morning from both uh, Bahraini friends as well as uh, some of my Israeli friends who were visiting Bahrain uh, yeah. telling me how much... Sorry, Khaled, go ahead. <laughs> Can we just ask that people don't unmute themselves, please? Hey, no. <laughs> Go ahead, Khaled. Khaled, can you unmute yourself? Just a second, sorry. Yeah, okay. perfect. All right, okay. Um, so, um, well, I was just uh, congratulating Israel on the successful uh, National Day. Um, I got a lot of messages from friends telling me how much they enjoyed it. Um, I had my first National Day here in Israel uh, in December. And uh, I'll tell you that putting uh, a, a National Day event together is no cup of tea when it's uh, with a in a country that you've uh, just established relations uh, with. Uh, I, for example, uh, did it with the uh, Hilton Hotel here in Tel Aviv. Um, and although uh, I knew it was a kosher hotel, I didn't really understand how strict that meant they were going to be. 
Um, I thought it was, uh, you know, since I was renting the hall and, uh, uh, you know, I, I had the idea of, of bringing Bahraini rose syrup and Vimto and uh, sweet sambusas and halwa, you know, because I wanted to give the Israelis a, a taste of, of Bahrain, uh, literally. Uh, and I knew all the restaurants and room service had to be kosher, but, you know, I didn't know that uh, at my own event, I was, uh, you know, I wasn't allowed to serve something that wasn't kosher. So um, in the very last minute, uh, the manager, who's also a, a very good friend of mine, suggested that we uh, ask uh, the hotel chef to see if he could try and recreate uh, what we were planning uh, to serve. And um, for around three days, um, <laughs> Uh, the, uh, my embassy staff and myself um, uh, were just sitting uh, during the day, tasting uh, the different uh, attempts the chef uh, had of creating uh, rose syrup, vimto, sweet, sweet sambusas, uh, amongst uh, other things. And, and, and by the time we reached the third day, uh, you know, I, I could have sworn that he used the stuff that I brought. Uh, from Bahrain, it was it was so good. Uh, um, anyway, uh, you know it's a tough job, uh, you know, trying to get an event together. Uh, you know, um, Huda and I both experienced uh, putting an event together in in the states, where you know that was difficult in itself. You know, even though you know the country and you're there and you're living there, but being in a new country without having all the connections that you do uh, from the previous uh, ambassadors or staff that are there, it's 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 a lot more difficult. Uh, so again, congratulations to Israel, to Eitan. Um, <clears throat> I wasn't sure what um, I was going to be talking to you about today, but uh, I gathered that uh, what most of you uh, would want to hear would be something about uh, an experience I had while I was here in Israel. So I'll tell you about uh, my first few days here and I'll leave uh, uh, the rest of my eight months here for you to uh, imagine. Um, I arrived with my wife on the afternoon of the 31st of August, uh, 2021, uh, a little nervous, uh, not knowing what to expect, you know, uh, would there be media when uh, I arrived, would there be uh, questions and what kind of questions would they be um, from the media, uh, but to my relief, uh, there was no media, there were only photographers, uh, which was a big relief. Um, I was greeted by the state chief of protocol who greeted us with the uh, warmest of greetings and escorted us to a lounge where at the time we had to take a, a PCR test and then we were off to the hotel. And it was, an, it was a Tuesday and there um, we had nothing official scheduled so I was sure that we'd have at least a few days to relax uh, at least you know till after the weekend. Um, but the next day I got a call from uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and they said, look, um, we're really sorry. We have a word in Hebrew and it's called techless. Uh, and tomorrow uh, you're going to experience it firsthand. <clears throat> I wasn't really sure what he meant, but he said, listen, tomorrow, first thing in the morning, you've got to come to Jerusalem. At 10 a.m., you have a meeting with the chief of protocol. 11.30, you have a meeting with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs DG. After that, we'll take you for a quick lunch with the ministry spokesperson. And immediately after that, you're going to go to the Knesset and meet with the Minister of Foreign Affairs. And then after that, you're going to go to see the President of Israel at his house for Rosh Hashanah. I calmly said, oh, okay, that's okay. We'll, we'll see you tomorrow then. But obviously, what was going through my mind was a completely uh, different thing. Anyway, the next day came and the meetings were very warm. Uh, casual, uh, personal, um, and uh, as each meeting went by, uh, the stress level dropped until we arrived at the president's house. And as I was uh, just about to get out of the car, and I was feeling good, you know, at that time, as you know, uh, the nerves were, were better, the stress was gone, you know, the driver, uh, whose name was Alon, turned around to me and said, uh, Ambassador, don't worry, the president of Israel does this every year. And all the different ambassadors will be there. The only difference is that this year, you will be the center of attention. So thank you, Alon, that just helped bring the stress uh, back again. 
anyway, I, I walked into the president's garden um, towards uh, the line of people that were waiting to greet the president. And I was sure that, you know, what Alan, uh, Alan had said was, you know, an, an exaggeration. And as I was walking, uh, a man came up to me and said, Mr. Ambassador, Mr. Ambassador. I said, yes. He says, can I uh, take a picture with you? So I said, okay. So uh, he stood next to me, took a selfie and walked away. And I just started to walk again. All of a sudden, I hear again, Mr. Ambassador, Mr. Ambassador, can I take a picture with you? And again, I said, sure. But this time, as he was walking to me and about to take a, a picture, I hear someone say, uh, can I be next? Can I be next? And then there was one after the other. And all of a sudden, there was this uh, long line of people wanting to take pictures with me, to talk to me. Uh, and all I could think about was, how was I going to get to the other side of the garden to be in that line to say hi to the president? Uh, but really, it was a, it was a humbling experience uh, from the moment I landed until I finally met with the president. And um, all these ambassadors lining up to talk to me or take pictures with me uh, saw the importance of Bahrain being here and the hope that uh, they believe these new relations uh, brought. Um, and since I've been here, there's been uh, there have been so much developments, uh, whether it's government relations or, you know, uh, business relations, people to people relations. You know, we have a big group of uh, Israelis who are in Bahrain, you know, and I'm in touch with them and I hear what they're uh, experiencing. And um, uh, it's all been very positive. Um, we're at the very beginning. Uh, we, we've um, I think uh, built a very strong uh, foundation. There is a long, <clears throat> a long way to go. A lot of uh, work that needs to be done. Uh, but I think we've set uh, uh, some very good uh, uh, foundation for the, for our relations to be uh, built on. So that that was um, how I was formally introduced to Israel. Um, uh, hopefully, if you invite me again, Huda, I will tell you. Uh, uh, another story about a, a, a different time uh, while I was here, but uh, thank you all for listening and uh, thank you Huda and the AGJC uh, for the invitation today. And that you have an open invitation whenever you like. To <laughs> Thank you. Um, thank you, Ambassador Al I you. was just talking to Huda this week about visiting Bahrain for the first time. I haven't been yet. I'm particularly excited to visit your beautiful country and see what the future has in store for relations uh, for all of us, for our community and the, the whole Gulf region. You have no excuse being in uh, the UAE to not have visited it's Bahrain. It's no but it keeps reminding me, so I'll make it, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll make it happen soon. Stop. Now for someone who has visited Bahrain recently, and he's just going to share a few words about his experience. We turn to a friend of AGJC, Sachi Halevi. Um, hello, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Uh, Shabbat Shalom, Mr. Ambassador. It's uh, great to see you again. Um, actually, I just, just landed from uh, Bahrain. Um, and uh, I'm still overwhelmed. You know, what can I say? It was... Uh, a very short trip it was really like a two days um, and thank God that uh, Huda took the time to uh, <laughs> to show me around a bit I appreciate it very much uh, dear Huda thank you so much for you know although it was a short trip too um, you know we, to drive around a bit to to talk about uh, you know uh, your beautiful country and um, the most uh, exciting thing was uh, obviously the this special event, um, this celebration, and I was, I know personally, I could really feel um, the special moment. It was a very very special moment. Um, I'm very thankful uh, for being invited to attend this uh, this event. And uh, it was a great privilege to be able to uh, to attend, to to meet people there, um, to sing, 
in Hebrew and in Arabic. Actually, I just told Lucy, I just came back home and I told her was, I think it was really the first time that singing in Arabic in a way was um, special. It's kind of, I was really like into the, the, the words and, 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 and I, I was very, very emotionally attached to what I was singing. And it was amazing to, uh, um, to, to get acqu acquainted with, with um, you know, the people that attended this event. And um, I think it was like, like, like uh, Mr. Uh, Ambassador Eitan said, that it's, it's, it is like we're, it's building, it's creating a new reality in a way. And um, it's always special to be part of, of these, these moments where you have in a way, a plain ground to uh, a plain ground of friendship. And I always say that uh, a friendship, it's not enough having friendship. Now, friendship needs to be nourished with, with a lot of uh, collaborations and, and uh, you know, getting to know each other more and more uh, in different kinds of uh, aspects. And uh, personally, I hope that uh, since I come from the, you know, the cultural aspect, whether it's music or cinema and television. So I truly hope that um, we'll be able to uh, to create new things together. So uh, again, thank you very much, uh, dear uh, Uda, for uh, making this happen and uh, Mr. Uh, Ambassador. And uh, I'm looking forward uh, for the next time and I hope it won't be just two days <laughs> because that was it was too short. <laughs> thank you Sachi. thank you so much for sharing sharing your experience it's great to have you back with us uh, on the call and as i say i'm looking forward to following in your footsteps and experiencing bahrain for the, the first time very soon rabbi abadi over to you for sharing some words about the passion thank you thank you jake and thank you mr ambassador and thank you Sachi, for your words indeed uh if by now, Mr. Ambassador, you know what the Tachlis is, that's definitely uh, uh, that's definitely already a step. You're a step ahead of many. So uh, we're looking forward to your visiting us here in Dubai and the Emirates, hopefully, to visit the Jewish community. So uh, all of us have heard uh, of the saying, and I'm sure it says, sometimes things are hidden in plain sight. Um, many things. Uh, stare at us in the face and we don't see them. Uh, we, uh, we tend to uh, search for things that are some, sometimes really in front of us and yet we don't see them. I'm sure we all have had some experience looking for a key, looking for the phone, looking for something that we have lost and, and it's right there on the table and we look throughout the entire room and then suddenly we realize oh, it's right there in front of us. It, it seems that it's something that happens to, uh, to many humans. It must be uh, some human uh, uh, quality to sometimes not see what's so obvious, not see what's right in plain sight and in front of our eyes. And then we tend to search. We tend to search for things either through uh, some uh, um, difficult methods or through uh, roundabout ways to try to find what we are looking and yet it's right in front of us. Now, especially when it comes to uh, our lives, uh, we all, what, what does a human look for? We all are looking for good health. We're looking for happiness, satisfaction, and we're looking for success and prosperity. Of course, we look for love, we look for affection, that all in all, that's what we are all looking in any area of this world, in any region, and in any, in any country. Basic things, right? Again, good health, of course, food and things, but you know, good health, happiness, prosperity, success. Uh, and we tend to uh, look for it sometimes in the wrong places. We tend to look for it in a roundabout ways that uh, either they're much more difficult to, uh, to uh, reach our goal 
and sometimes, of course, we just uh, create certain uh, heebie-jeebie ways of finding those things. We go to a to uh, tarot readers, uh, uh, witchcrafts, or or uh, you know uh, some uh, some fake Kabbalah that is very well known that it's happening all around the world, or we go to some holy man or holy people to 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 show us the way. Give me the quick way. How can I get success? The quick way. How can I can I uh, have a good health? You know, I'm sure many of you have seen lists. You know, five ways you live to 100 years, or five ways to maintain the good health, or five ways to this, and many different ways. And many magazines, look, uh, magazines, uh, newspapers, charlatans make a living trying to find a quick fix to our problems in this life. And unfortunately, many humans fall for it. They fall for it because it's a quick fix. They think, oh, I just need to do these five things and I'm done. I can get good health, success, love, affection, you name it, quick fixes. And of course, it's always the longest way. And most of the time, we won't find what we're looking for when we search for these quick fixes. Ladies and gentlemen, my dear friends, the parasha of this week, the Torah portion of this week, is basically hidden but in plain sight very very clearly just the first two verses tells us how to obtain long life happiness success prosperity and just the first two sentences if you follow in my statues if you keep my ordinances and you fulfill them, then, and the then is, I shall give you rain, prosperity, your land will give the grain, you'll have long life, you'll have peace, tranquility, no wars, no crimes, no sword, nothing like that. An entire huge paragraph telling us all the benefits of just following the statues and the precepts of the Almighty God of Hashem. And that is basically everything that a human being looks for. Long life, peace, tranquility, success, happiness, prosperity. It's all right there. But unfortunately, of course, we read it every week, uh, not every, excuse me, we read it every year, that portion, and we read it many times during that week. And yet, somehow it's hidden in plain sight. Sometimes is the most known secret, but we don't know about it. Somehow we overlook it, we bypass it, and we try to explain, no, maybe there is a different way, maybe there is a different route, maybe it means something else, but it doesn't. Let me assure you that the words of the perasha, the first paragraph of the portion of the, of the Torah this week spells it all. Let me encourage you, read it, meditate in it, and um, internalize it, and it's not me who's going to guarantee you, because I'm nobody to guarantee you anything. It's God, Almighty God, who as he guarantees it in the perasha, you will find it guaranteed in your own life. Let us hope and pray that indeed we take those words to heart, that we uh, follow the morals, the ethics, the precepts of our Torah, of our tradition, and hopefully we'll find all what our heart seeks and desires to do good in this world. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you, Rabbi Abadi. Now we're going to take a look at the Pasha itself with Alex reading a section of it in Hebrew, followed by Richard with an English translation. Thank you, Jake. And thank you, Ambassador uh, Khaled, for coming on this call. It means a lot to us. I spent the Shabbat with you live in Bahrain no one on Zoom. I hope the next one we can spend together in Israel and maybe we can sing together. We'll invite Sachi to help us. Vim gaol yigal ish mimasa oh, hamishito yosef alav, 
וכל מעשה בקו הצאן, כל אשר יעבור תחת השבט העשירי, יהיה קודש לאדוני, לא יבקר בין טוב לרע ולא ימירנו ואם המר ימירנו והיה הוא תמורתו יהיה קודש לא ייגאל אלה המצוות אשר ציווה אדוני את משה אל בני ישראל בהר סיני חזק חזק ונתחזק חזק חזק ונתחזק ריצ'רד Thank you. Thank you and greetings from Los Angeles. Shabbat Shalom to everybody. No human being who has been proscribed can be ransomed. He shall be put to death. All tithes from the land, whether seed from the ground or fruit from the tree are the Lord's. They are holy to the Lord. If anyone wishes to redeem any of his tithes, he must add one fifth to them. All tithes of the herd or flock of all that passes under the shepherd's staff, every tenth one shall be holy to the Lord. He must not look out for good as against bad or make substitution for it. If he does make substitution for it, then it and its substitute shall both be holy. It cannot be redeemed. These are the commandments that the Lord gave Moses for the Israelite people on Mount Sinai. Thank you, Richard. Now we turn to the prayer for peace, and Jean is going to read it for us. Thank you, Jake. I'm reading the prayer for peace, which is adapted from Rabbi Nachman ben Fega. Lord of peace, divine ruler, to whom peace belongs, master of peace, creator of all things, may it be your will to put an end to war and bloodshed on earth and to spread a great and wonderful peace over the whole world. Help us and save us all and let us cling tightly to the virtue of peace. Let there be a truly great peace between every person and their fellow and let there be no discord between people, even in their hearts. Let us never shame any person on earth, great or small. May it be granted unto us to fulfill thy commandment to love thy, thy neighbor as thyself with all our hearts and souls and bodies and possessions. God who is peace, bless us with peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jean. Now for the prayer for the GCC countries, we go to Rose. Thank you. It's an honor to join you all. May he who gives salvation to kings and dominion to princes whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, who delivers his servant David from the evil sword, who makes a way in the sea and the path through the mighty waters, bless and protect, guard and help, exalt, magnify and uplift, his majesty, the king of Saudi Arabia, his majesty, the king of Bahrain, his majesty, the Sultan of Oman, his highness, the president of the United Arab Emirates, His Highness the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness the Emir of Qatar, and all their crown princes. And may the Supreme King of Kings in his mercy put a spirit of wisdom and understanding into their hearts and the hearts of all their counselors and officials to deal kindly with us, the house of Jacob and all the people of this land. Be their shelter and stronghold and let them not falter. In their days and in ours, may these lands be blessed with stability, prosperity, and peace. May this be his will. And let us say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rose. To sing us out with Shalom Aleichem, back to Alex. So before I sing Shalom Aleichem, I want to thank a few people that are working every week very hard in order to make this Zoom a success. And uh, I want to thank uh, Ambassador Huda. I want to thank Ariela, and I want to thank you, Jake. I think uh, a lot of people around the globe are looking forward every Friday morning or Friday afternoon to participate. So thank you very much. Shalom Aleichem, Malachi Yashari, Malachi Yenya. Melech, Malchay Amlachim, a Kadosh Baruchu, Bohem Shalom, Malachi, Shalom, Malachi, Yom, Melech, Malchay Amlachim, a 
הקדוש ברוך הוא, בחרוני לשלום, מלאכי השלום, מלאכי עליון, אם אלך מלאכי המלאך עם הקדוש ברוך הוא, שא אתכם לשלום, מלאכי השלום, מלאכי עליון, מי מלך מלאכי המלאך עם הקדוש ברוך הוא. שבת שלום אביבודי. שבת שלום. 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 שבת שלום.